to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is cycle two, week two, science. For everyone else, that just means we are going to be talking about all of the different biomes on Earth. If you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. There's a link in the description if you need it. Um, and grab your workbooks. There is a Cycle 2 workbook available for both history and science that go along with each of these videos. It will help your student dive deeper into these topics. Now, without further ado, let's start doodling. Today we are going to talk about biomes, but the first question we need to answer is, what are biomes? Well, biomes are parts of the world that have a similar climate, similar animals, and similar plants. There are land biomes called terrestrial biomes and water biomes called aquatic biomes. Specifically today, we are going to talk about just the land biomes. And the first one up on our list are grasslands. Grasslands are these wide expanses of land filled with low growing plants, such as grasses and wildflowers. The amount of rain that grasslands receive is not enough to grow tall, beautiful trees and produce a forest, but it is more than what a, des a desert receives. These grasslands are typically located between deserts and forests. And there is a major temperate grassland located in Central North America in the United States. There is also one in Southeast South America in Uruguay and Argentina, and one in Asia along the southern portion of Russia and Mongolia. The types of animals that are found in grasslands vary. They can include things like wolves or prairie dogs and weasels, geese, foxes, turkeys, etc. A lot of smaller animals that like to hide in grasses, such as snakes and rabbits, can also be found here. The plants in the grassland also vary depending on the area. There are really thousands of different kinds of grasses that can grow in this biome, and where they grow depends on the amount of rain that that area gets. In wetter grasslands, there are taller grasses, and in drier, grasslands, there are shorter grasses. Examples of these types of grasses are buffalo grass, needle grass, big blue stem, switchgrass, etc. Some other plants that can grow here are sunflowers, goldenrods, butterweed, clover, and asters. Wildfires can play a very important role in the biodiversity of the grasslands, and scientists believe that occasional fires can help get rid of old grasses and allow for new grasses to grow. These grasslands play a very important role for farmers and food production. They are places that many people in the United States grow crops or raise cattle. Now, let's move on to talking about the desert biome. When we think of deserts, sometimes we think of places like the Sahara Desert where there's miles of miles of blowing sand. But it's important to note that not all deserts are like this. Some deserts can be rocky with a few plants and shrubs. And there are even deserts that are cold like Antarctica. So what makes a desert a desert? Deserts are defined specifically by the amount of rain they get, and deserts have a lack of rain. Deserts only get about 10 inches or less of rain a year, which means that they have dry soil and not very much surface water. 
because deserts are so dry and there isn't very much humidity, there is no humid blanket to help insulate the ground. And so it may get very hot during the day when the sun is out, but it doesn't hold the heat overnight. And so many hot deserts can get very cold once the sun sets. So for example, during the day, a desert could reach temperatures of up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then once the sun sets, the temperature can plummet to below freezing or 32 degrees Fahrenheit during the night. So where are some of these major hot and dry deserts? The Sahara Desert, which we just talked about, is one of them. And that is located in Northern Africa. This is that sandy desert you think of with giant sand dunes. There is also the Arabian Desert in the Middle East, the Gobi Desert in Northern China and Mongolia, and the Kalahari Desert in Africa. How in the world do animals even survive in this type of environment with extreme temperatures and lack of water? Well, many of these animals are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the heat of the day and they come out when it's cooler at night. This means that these animals will dig burrows and tunnels into the ground to stay cool. Some of these animals can include reptiles, scorpions, and meerkats. Another way that animals can live in this environment is that they have adapted to needing very little water. So camels in particular do not need much water and they can store water in the fat on its hump while other animals can store preserves in their tails. Similarly, only a few types of plants can survive this type of harsh environment. These include things like cactus, some grasses, and some short trees. You won't see tall trees in the desert. Next up, let's talk about scrub lands. Scrub lands are a place with what's called scrub vegetation. And this word scrub means low shrubs. And these shrubs can be mixed with um, grasses and herbs. Scrublands may develop naturally or they actually can result as a side effect of human activity. They could remain stable over time or become transitional and only occur temporarily as a result of a disturbance such as a major fire. So this scrubland biome is unique in that regard. Let's move on to talking about the tundra biome. This is a cold and treeless place and the conditions here are very harsh and so it makes it very hard for plants and animals to survive. Some main characteristics of tundra is that it's very cold. It's one of the coldest biomes and the average temperature is around negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets much colder than that in the winter and warming warmer during the summer, although their summer is very short. Another characteristic about the tundra is that it is dry and most of this precipitation comes to the earth as snow. It has a layer in the, just below the topsoil called permafrost. And this ground is permanently frozen year round. Tundra is often very barren, does not have many nutrients to support plant and animal life in the soil, and it has a very short growing season. Let's talk a little bit more about permafrost. So what is permafrost? As we said, it's a layer of ground below the topsoil that remains frozen throughout the year. It is only a few feet below the surface, but this permafrost is the main thing that prevents trees from growing in the tundra because if you think about it, trees need to have those deep roots and they can't grow into the frozen ground. So because of these harsh conditions, the plants that grow in the tundra can include some types of grasses sh and shrubs, and they tend to grow in groups and stay low to the ground to be protected from the icy wind that whips over the surface. Animals that are in the tundra can include birds, insects, owls, 
fox and hares. Some of these animals will hibernate for the winter while others migrate during the winter. But there are a few that have adapted to winter in the tundra. Some even change their coats from brown in the summer to white in the winter so that they can blend in with their surroundings better. One of these examples is the Arctic hare or the Arctic fox. Next up, let's talk about some forest biomes. First is the deciduous forest biome. A deciduous forest is composed mostly of trees that are going to shed all their leaves every year. They all have temperate climates characterized by having a winter season. And so these deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall and remain, and remain bare in the winter, and then they will grow new leaves in the spring. Examples of trees that grow here are oaks, beeches, birches, chestnuts, aspens, and maples. The animals that live here can include snails and slugs, as well as many other different types of invertebrates. And it can also include things like birds, owls, mice, moles, bears, deer, and rabbits. Next up is coniferous forests. So what distinguishes a coniferous forest from other forest biomes? Well, the fact that they have evergreen trees. So evergreen trees or coniferous trees don't drop their leaves or needles in the winter. They keep their leaves or needles and they soak up as much sunlight for as long as possible. Another distinguishing characteristic is that these biomes contain the coldest weather of all the forest biomes. Winters can get as cold as negative 60 degrees and can last for six months with an average temperature below freezing. Some of the plants that live here can include spruce trees, pine trees, cedar trees, and fir trees. And some of the animals that live here have to be able to survive the cold winters, like birds that migrate south for the winter, squirrels that can store up food for the winter, and insects. Some of the predators that live here are wolves, bears, bats, and lynx. You will also see quite a few deer and elk in these biomes. Now let's talk about our last biome, which are tropical rainforests. These rainforests are very fascinating because it's filled with tall trees, giant insects, and all sorts of animals. Rainforests are forests that get a lot of rain, and so these are located near the tropics or near the equator. Most of these rainforests get at least 75 inches of rain, with many getting well above 100 inches of rain a year. Due to this, rainforests are very humid and warm. Rainforests have the most biodiversity of all of the land biomes even though it only covers about 6% of the Earth's surface. There are many things that live here, like monkeys, birds, and insects, which can live in the canopy of the rainforest, which is up above and the top layer of trees. And then there are things like bats, frogs, owls, snakes, and leopards that live in the understory, which is beneath the canopy. Then there are animals like deer and pigs and snakes that prefer the forest floor. The rainforests are important to the world for many different reasons. They act as the producer of about 40% of the world's oxygen. And so as you can see, all of these biomes are very important to life on Earth. And that's all we have for today. Go ahead and get your workbooks at doodlingthrougheducation.com. Fill out those worksheets, dive deeper into learning about the different biomes. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.